Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today, uh, this is a EWP, or Expand World Prefabs tutorial. On this server, we have an alternative way to mine copper nodes, instead of just using the pickaxe. By using roughly 5 wards, you can mine the entire node. Alright, this is the last one. Now we've activated all these wards, so one hit is gonna trigger the event. So let's go, and then boom, some of them are triggered already. So you can see that there is a pulsing, right? And then, but that one in the background, boom, it exploded. As you can see, it is beautifully chaotic. <laughs> hey, I know what you're thinking. Wait, don't Dverger homes have wards in them? Doesn't that mean you could just go in here and punch it? Oh, no, everything's fine. Well, that's because there is some fail-safes, again, added, so that you can't activate the ward bomb if it's near certain things, like the dverger or a bed, for example. Let's say that we put the ward pretty far away, though. I'm gonna turn it this way to aim at this rock right here, and then let's see if we can activate it. There we go. It activated successfully. We don't know if it'll actually explode, though. Nope, no luck. But now, if we try that right here, and then we try and activate it, boom, it's just a normal ward. See? Pretty nifty, right? Before we get into the specifics of how you can add this to your EWP server, I'd like to point out that everything that you're seeing with this and all the upcoming videos is only possible because of the mods made by Yere. This one server-side mod allows you to make a different kind of Valheim that anyone else can join without any mods themselves. Yeah, you heard me right. That means Xbox players, Mac players, PC players who don't have to install anything to have a different experience. I won't go into the depths of what that really means. I encourage you to support Yare's work. He's done absurd amounts of stuff for the Valheim community, and it's really insane what he enables the rest of us to do. So if you can, I encourage you to support him in some way. He really deserves it. As we saw earlier, the ward is now a mine. Essentially, a proximity mine, or a remote mine if you shoot an arrow at it. But if you take it into a base, well, it's just a normal ward. So how is this possible? What's going on here? Let's get into it. As usual, the tutorials I show you with Expand World Prefabs usually focus on these two files. The Expand Data YAML and the Expand Prefabs YAML. I've taken the ward bomb portion of the script out of the YAML and put it here so it's easier for us to work with. As we can see here, there's a whole bunch of whatever the heck this is. It's just visual effects and the actual explosions and all that, and like the distances. I'll explain all of that, you don't really need to worry about it. The thing you need to get used to is this thing here, and this label here. You'll always see sort of a comment, at least ideally a comment, that explains what it is, or at least what thing is being altered. And then after that, you have the actual script itself, which will usually start with something like dash, prefab, or some other commands. Essentially, what happens in games is they have all of these pre-made objects, let's call them, or pre-made actions. You can call them prefabs. And instead of making something from scratch every time the game does something, it just runs that prefab, or spawns that prefab. Make sense? What Expand World Prefabs does is allow you to directly alter what happens after that prefab shows up. So here we're altering something called private area. It's part of the ward, and it's what allows us to then interact with the ward. You can see that it will then react to the state of flash, which is what happens when somebody attacks the ward, even if you're in a diverter place, and it will react to that state by spawning all of this stuff. But wait a second, if it spawns all of that stuff when it gets activated, it's not spawning it all straight away, is it? Well, that's because things are set on a delay. So there's the initial trigger, and then things happen afterwards. And as you've already observed, sometimes, about a quarter of the time, it actually explodes. But three quarters of the time, nothing happens. You see the green bubble, and then a goblin laughs, and it doesn't explode. So what's happening is we're triggering all of these visual effects, and these numbers here are the delays. I know, there's a lot of numbers, don't worry about it, you don't need to understand all of this. In this video, I'm just gonna point at 
the ones that you need to know about so you can adjust this if you want to do it yourself. These are the delays, they're the timers. So this special effect will show up two seconds after the trigger. This one will show up 8.4 seconds after the trigger. Make sense? And it's very important that you use the right format for all of these, because if you don't, the entire script will break and nothing will happen. But what are these numbers, all of these zeros? Well, you don't need to worry about the second set of zeros, okay? What you need to know is the first set. These are the X, Y, Z coordinates. I may have got the order wrong, apologies if I did, but this is the coordinate part. This is where you determine where the visual effects shows up. When we activate a ward, it has this red visual effect showing on a delay, right? And it happens in the exact same place that the ward was located. That's what this zero zero is. And then this one here makes it a little bit lower. You could also make it a little bit higher, depending on the visual effects you're going for. So we have the exact visual effects, and if you ever want to test these, you can just use dev commands in normal Valheim and type spawn and then the visual effects name, and you'll see it, right? That's what the red one you see is. If you don't have any of these values, as you can see here, then you can just simply spawn the effects. This is almost always just going to be visual. You need this data part here to make the actual damage happen. After all, I mean, what kind of explosion doesn't actually blow up stone and fell trees and hurt you if you're too close to it? That makes it nowhere near as fun. And that's where this expand data file comes in. The data portion is much smaller because all we need is this one data here that allows us to damage things. If you don't do this data part, then what's gonna happen is the game will spawn the effects, but they won't have any weight to them, meaning nothing will happen, they won't hurt you. Well, most of the time. And conversely, if you want to alter this, let's say, for example, you wanna make sure that players don't get hurt, you can set this one to a zero. And if you wanted to make it so that it doesn't hurt other objects, then you could set this hit props to zero as well. But I personally think it feels much more realistic and fun when these things are damaging and you can accidentally blow yourself up when you're trying to use it. So we've broken apart most of this, but I know I've been getting in the guts of it. So let's show you another explosion to make it more interesting. It's not just the player that can activate the wards. They essentially function as proximity mines. Any enemy that's nearby and gets alerted is going to try and destroy them. Oh, and that goblin got unlucky. <laughs> I guess that great work did too. Oh, he bit the bird! Oh, how tragic. Uh, you know, I've seen that so many times, but one of my favorite parts is how afterwards it makes a bunch of noise and the enemies come to investigate. <laughs> I just love the idea, like, what does that great work do? He shows up and sees this. So the explosiveness that you've seen here is mostly this, but it's not just this. It's also that I've in, I've changed this prefab so that the bio bombs themselves trigger extra explosions. Basically, the ward triggers explosions that then trigger an extra explosion. So that's why it looks so long and drawn out, and it's so grand and fireworky. And I, I, I didn't have the heart to tone it down, so I, I'm just trying to find any excuse to make this a valid thing in the game. Now, let's look at another, another part of this script. Did you notice how when I turn it on and I hit it, it vanishes. Well, that's a way to take the items out of the game and encourage people to have a use for Sirtling cores. That's also the logic behind them being duds, so that it's not as easy to use just one of them. Luckily, because it's a YAML file, we can just save and then wait like 10-20 seconds and it'll be a live change in the game. And this makes it so much easier to learn. So now I place the ward, and I activate it, and I hit it, <laughs> well, you see, I've actually not been showing you the whole prefab part, because there's actually this second area, because think about it, sometimes it doesn't explode up, and sometimes it does, right? So this is what manages the dud. 
you can see it still spawns something, but it's just visuals and it doesn't actually trigger any explosions. And this is the goblin laugh that indicates, ha, ah, the goblin stole your stuff. So we also need to do the remove true removal here. And now we can save it. And now if we activate the ward, you can see that the gray dwarf is hitting it and triggering it, but nothing's happening. Actually, something horrible is happening. So every slap that Grey Dwarf gave was another roll to trigger all of this stuff. And that's why the explosion lasts a little bit longer. As you can see, it's important to add the remove true prefab whenever you want the prefab you're modifying to go away. Personally, this really helps with the game's balance because Valheim as is has sort of some item problems. There are certain kinds of items that accumulate too much and don't have any use and they end up feeling useless and boring. So by making item sinks like this, you give value to all of the items that are necessary to make the ward. So now we're on the final part, which is the fail safes and the safeguards. How is it that the ward just is a normal ward when it's near a base? That's where this section comes in. You have to have the banned objects and then a list of the banned objects, and each object has a distance in meters of how far away it will look. So all of the above stuff will only even run in the first place if one of these items is not nearby. But be careful, because if you just add a banned objects list, then when you try and do this, it's not gonna work. The failsafe won't work at all, and it'll just explode. And that's because the game will be looking for all of them to be there to prevent the explosion. AKA the Diverger talk component, a workbench, a bed, another bed, another bed, a forge, and a black forge. So basically, it's always gonna explode, because when is all that stuff gonna be there? So that's why you need to have this part, banned objects limit one. That way, if even one of these shows up, it will prevent this all the way up to this prefab part, all the way up to there. So everything from here to here will be blocked and it won't even spawn in in the first place. And that is how the wards in the player base are normal, as you can see. <laughs> Everything is ready and in place. If you want to learn all about this, or browse through a database of other configs people have made, then all you need to do is join the Valheim World Editing Discord by Yere. I'm not kidding, he hasn't just made the mods and stuff, but he's also set up the community so that we can all use them and talk about them and learn how to use them. It's amazing! And that's where you gotta go, go to that Discord, you can find a link to that, just look in the description of this video and you'll see a link to the Valheim World Editing Discord. Once there, you can browse the config share section here, and this is where you can find all sorts of stuff. And if you want to find the script that you need to make the ward bombs that I've shown in this video, that's where you need to go to get them. Yere also has lots of documentation for pretty much all of the mods that he's done the documentation that teaches you all of the syntax that I've shown you in the video. But don't worry, you, you don't need to be a programmer. You can do this sort of thing and change your server without totally understanding how it works because of this Valheim World editing group. And with that, we're ready for the grand finale. All our ward buddies have been activated and <laughs> Toodaloo and Tweedledum fell for it straight away. <laughs> If you're interested in getting your own dedicated Valheim server, then consider using my link, JP Valheim, at Zap Hosting. This is a great way for you to make a server that you can customize. Have you ever felt that, oh, Valheim would just be so much more interesting if this was different? Well, now you have a way to do that. And there's no mod lists, there's no requirements for the players. It is an absolutely fascinating experience and is also remarkably fun. And that's it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. And remember, this is all available thanks to Yere and also Iron Gate. So let's give them credit where credit is due. And if you want to support Yeri in particular, I strongly encourage you to go to any of the Buy Me a Computer links. Don't worry, you don't have to buy a whole computer. And here you can commit to whatever you want, just like five euros a month is a good amount, right? 
and it makes a big difference. Really, the more we can enable people who provide us with these tools to live lives and <laughs> do more of this kind of thing and less of the other work they're forced to do, then the better. So if you want to make a difference in the Valheim community, supporting Yare is a wonderful way to do it. And that's it for this video. If you want more Valheim content to show up, and you want to learn more about Expand World prefabs for a server, then definitely subscribe to my channel. But if you want more just Valheim content in general, you can like this video or any other video about Valheim, and that's going to tell YouTube that you want it to keep dishing out the Valheim content. You see, it appears that uh, there's a whole new world of customization that people haven't even begun to comprehend. So. Let's make access to this information as easy and as convenient as possible. And then we can see what happens.